pretty sure I'm in labor. I don't know if you can hear me very well because I have my fan in my bedroom on, but I hope that you can. Um, if this is early labor, it's going to be the best talking that I can do, so um, I'm having a contraction right now. Contractions aren't super consistent or I don't know I'm, t I'm timing them right now so I can figure it out but it started in the middle of the night and then around 5 a.m. I am pretty sure my water broke there was like this huge pop and then a little trickle but I imagined that my water would be so much more than that so I don't totally know it's 8 a.m. right now Chad just left for work and I'm gonna try to rest while I can and eat because I'm hungry. I'm so excited, I can't even, I couldn't sleep all night because I felt like it was Christmas once I started getting like the cramping and um, contractions. I was just so excited, I couldn't sleep at all. Hey guys, Ashley here, one half of that hippie couple, British Columbia, and today's video is one I am beyond excited to share with you. Today, I will be sharing my birth story. I have always wanted to experience birth and labor and delivery. It was a wild day, so we have some footage, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the story and show you what footage I do have to kind of put them both together. So we had a surprise gender and we delivered at home in our tiny house on wheels. started timing my contractions. They're pretty consistent but not very long. I definitely am in labor, I would say. I have the wash the cameras on the washing machine right now, so hopefully it's not too loud and obnoxious. It started raining just now. It's been so hot and so dry. It's like the rain is so exciting. It's such a blessing. It's going to cool it down. It's going to make today a good day. This baby's going to be here today. You call you guys. Um, because I, um, I've been having contractions now um, all night it started last night um, but then at 5 o'clock my I think my water broke because it was like this big pop and then but it was just a little trickle of liquid that came out and then ever since that happened I've been having like contractions that are pretty consistent they're about two minutes apart and 30 seconds long Clear. I did lose my mucus. Yeah, I lost my mucus plug actually yesterday or the day before, and but, but since then I've I, I lost a big chunk of it um, uh, two days ago, and then since then it's just been like little tiny like pieces of it maybe. Um, mm, I was just doing the dishes, so, so I mean I the. They're not like unbearable, but they definitely just take a second. <laughs> that sounds good, okay. Okay, so what time is it? It's 10 o'clock. So I called the midwife to see what she would say, and she said that she's going to be here within an hour to just give me a checkup and see what she thinks and let me know. Chad is still at work, so I don't want to tell him to come home just yet in case 
this isn't it, but I'm hanging in there. I just cleaned the house. I did the dishes. I did the laundry. I'm ready. <laughs> So the midwife was just here, she just left, and um, my contractions have slowed down a little bit. They're farther apart now. They're more intense than they were earlier, but they're just less often, I guess. So I'm going to try to rest, maybe lay down, maybe sleep if I can, just relax as much as possible and until they pick back up. So once my contractions started becoming more and more intense, it was a lot harder to film and talk through them, obviously. And Chad was so amazing. He was by my side the whole entire time. He never left me and he was the most amazing support I could have ever dreamed of. I am going to try to describe what this day was like for me. I've relived it in my head so many times and I just find it challenging to find the words to even describe my experience. It was so, I think even while I was in labor, I said this a million times, my midwife kept telling me, I kept saying, this is crazy, this is nuts, I can't believe this is happening. It was all very surreal. I ended up being in labor for 18 hours, and I can tell you right now, it felt like four. It goes by so fast, you have no perception of time, you have no idea what's going on around you, you were just like in the zone. I had practiced hypnobirthing, so when I was going through the contractions, I was really just working on staying as calm as possible and breathing through them, each and every single one. And that's where Chad and my midwife also helped me so much. Like if I started to um, get like panicky where I was in too much pain to think about breathing, they would always remind me to breathe. And then I would remember that the moments where I actually did stop and breathe, they were a lot less painful so it was kind of easy for me to keep with the breathing because the moment i stopped breathing was the moment they really started to hurt i mean the whole entire time they hurt don't get me wrong even when i'm breathing they hurt but it was manageable i guess at that point But like minor in time, not I minor know. in pain. No, I know. Probably minor in pain too. It's preparing you. I know. It's one of those things where what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So if each one gets more, you're just going to be super weak. Wait, wait, come back. <laughs> in the beginning, if I would just breathe, I mean... Like, start breathing right off the get-go, right? Instead of being like, ah, 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 Because I think it won't come, like, I think it, like, is that it? Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> and then I start panicking. Yeah. Just take those warning signals as a start I'm breathing breathing now. Start breathing now, lady. Chad and I were in the bathtub 
um, or in the bathroom actually where I was laboring when the in the contraction started getting more and more intense that's around the time when he called the midwife it found I found it very helpful at that point for him to push and squeeze on my hips really hard while I was in contractions um, as the day went on that didn't really do as much for me anymore so that was really helpful in the beginning but then later on he would just pretty much hold me and I would hang on to him I would squat down and the squatting really helped me and the breathing I was squatting and breathing a lot so the midwife came around 4 o'clock I think 4 p.m. I wasn't able to sleep like I had originally planned I wanted to have a nap I couldn't lay down I had to be up to deal with my contractions so that was okay it, it was what it was and I did try to eat as much as possible um, Chad kept trying to feed me water which was really important to stay as hydrated as possible our midwife was amazing it was such a beautiful day and moment it was just me and Chad and the midwife in the tiny house it felt like this sacred little like cove where the three of us just went on like this magical journey together I was telling her like it's amazing that she just walks into somebody's house and goes through this experience with them and I just felt like so connected and close to her and she helped me so much she always knew what to say I mean it's her job but it was like really really special and I really appreciate having her there. I did labor a lot in the bathtub. I did find that the water helped with pain a lot. It helped relax me more maybe more so than the pain I would say. I mean it hurt. I'm not gonna lie to you but being in the water was able to keep me more relaxed so in between contractions there was moments where I could almost like zone out and actually fall asleep and then a contraction would come and I would breathe through it and then just relax but at the same time it was so relaxing that the midwife had suggested maybe get up and try some different positions. She suggested a lot of things. She said maybe go for a walk. So Chad and I went for a walk up and down our property for a little bit and that was super challenging walking and going through contractions. Chad would just hold me while I would just like hang off of him and get through these contractions. After we went for our walk outside, she did a check on me to see where I was at, and this was my first check. So at that point was when she realized that my water had not fully broken. I was about four centimeters dilated. And I think at that point it was about six o'clock, 6.30 p.m. I had suggested because I was, I was ready. I wanted to deliver this baby. The contractions just keep on coming and I wanted to keep on progressing so I asked her to break my water for me and once she broke my water it was like just intense after that I don't even remember I, <laughs> I don't even remember a lot of things after that the midwife did get a picture of us at one point actually when I was laboring in our like dining kitchen area near the bed that we put down that was a really helpful moment because I was starting to get really intense contractions and I was able to kind of bear down and get like really into my body more those moments prepared me for later when it came time time for pushing for sure looking back on it now I found for me I've just let my body tell me what to do and whatever I was feeling I just went with it I will not lie there was a moment maybe more than one that I literally said to myself in my head what am I doing why am I at home and where are the drugs why did I think that this was such a good idea whenever the midwife which I think was only once, honestly, suggested that we could talk about other options um, for medication or something. I would always say, no, I've got this. Like, I knew that I could do it. It was just very, very hard. Mentally, emotionally, and physically, all at once. It was just, it was very hard. And I was just working through that. I'm glad that I did, though. When it came time to push, I did get back in the water because at that point the contractions were unbearable. They were so painful, but the water was the most relaxing place for me. We were a bit concerned that my tub might be too shallow to deliver in. Um, because the baby has to stay under the water when they come out until they're out fully before you bring them up onto your chest. 
And at that point, I was nine centimeters dilated. I asked not to know how many centimeters I was until it was time to push, pretty much, because I didn't want to feel discouraged at any point. I think it was around probably 11 p.m. I got back into the tub because it was getting to a point where I was starting to have the urge to push a lot more. My midwife called for the second midwife to come. I kid you not, as the second midwife came in, I was having a contraction and I was like, this baby's coming now. So I started pushing pretty much at that point, which was around 11.15, I would say, because they told me I pushed for 30 minutes. The pushing part, this is where I'm gonna, I, I, I wish I could have words for this. It was the most extremely painful experience of my entire life. At this point, it's been just over a week since I delivered and I have already forgotten like what the pain was like, but I remember my train of thought at the time. I remember questioning if I could do it. I didn't know if I believed in myself at that time. It was just so extreme, but at the same time, it was just such a euphoric, out of this world experience. My body had taken over and there was nothing that I could do about it. Like this baby was coming and I just had to trust my body and myself. And between Chad and the midwife, especially yeah, the two of them were just so amazing. They completely encouraged me and told me that I can do this. At one point I think I, t I looked at them and I was like, I'm too weak, I can't. And then they started laughing at me and they're like, your baby is out. Like the baby was crowning at this point. They're like, you are doing it. This baby is coming now. My midwife suggested to reach down and feel the crown of my baby's head. And at that point, I knew that it was just the crown of the baby's head. And so when I felt their head, I just, I was like, I'm done pushing. I want this baby out now. So I pushed that baby out so fast. I did end up tearing because I wasn't gentle about it. I just wanted that baby out. So I do have a second degree um, tear and two small tears in my labia, I do believe. I don't even totally remember, but I do have stitches and that sucks. <laughs> but the moment that they, oh, I'm going to try not to cry. <laughs> it's so amazing. The moment that I pushed my baby out. I could feel every single thing. It's so surreal. And she picked them up and put them on my chest. And the, that moment when you can feel like there's skin on your skin and they're so soft. I remember thinking, you're so big. No wonder that hurt. <laughs> like they were, they took up my whole chest. And I keep saying they because we didn't know who they were yet. And so when they were on my chest, the midwife had a towel on them as well. And then I had a moment to just gather my bearings because there was screaming, there was crying. And then I remembered that I still didn't know who they were yet. You got this, love. You got this. Love. You got this. You got this. Just breathe. Good. Just push down into that pressure. It's totally safe to push down into that pressure. There you go. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. You got this, love. Keep going. Keep going. You got this, love. That's it. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. You got this. You got this, love. You got this baby. Is that contraction still there? You got this baby. There you go. Your baby's head's out. Your baby. You can see your baby. You can see the baby. There's just a card coming out of this, okay? So just no pushing quite yet. Okay, okay. It's going to come through the front, actually. It's fine. Next contraction, you're going to push and beat your baby, okay? And that fan needs to go off now. Come on it.
You got this, love. You got this. Keep breathing. Get your energy. You got this. You got this, love. It's gonna come. Just get your, get your energy. Slow down your breathing. Just get your energy back. You got this. You got this, love. You got this, love. Oh my god. You got this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. Oh my god. I know. I know you're just a little bit stunned, hey? Okay. Oh my god. Yeah. It's a little bit stunned, sweetie. It's the most beautiful oh thing I've ever seen. Hello, my it's, it's a boy. boy. <laughs> it's a boy, babe. Oh my god. Beautiful baby boy. <laughs> Isn't that the most amazing thing ever? Oh, congratulations, you guys. I can't believe I just did you that. You just did it. Did. You did it. I'm sorry, I screamed so much. Oh, don't be sorry. You did it. You did it. Baby, I feel like you. Just pull your little mom in my hand. That's your baby. That's your baby, actually. How do you feel? You feel okay? Yeah. Feels so much better. Oh yeah, I bet. And it even gets better because it comes out. It's like the first euphoria. You have more. You did it. believing in me. Oh, it's the most, you did It'd the most amazing thing ever. I didn't believe in me. Oh, I, I know you didn't, but honestly, you were just amazing. <laughs> it's a boy. It's a boy. We knew it was a boy the whole entire time. And so, baby Floyd Aaron Kozaris was born at 11.46 p.m. on July 31st. 2021. He weighed seven pounds, nine and a half ounces, and he was born in our bathtub in our tiny house on wheels. <sighs> I just love him so much. I didn't know that you could love anybody. Like, it's different. It's a different kind of love. I'm overjoyed, exploding with happiness. And as if on cue, little baby Floyd is waking up right now. Let me introduce you. The newest member of our hippie family, Baby Floyd. Well guys, thanks for watching my birth story. Uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out. I am happy to share it with you. It was an amazing, incredible experience. I still am just in awe and I barely have words to describe it, but... I'll be able to look back on this video for the rest of my life and I am so, so happy. As always, you guys have a great rest of your day, we'll have a great rest of our day, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. I love this photo. I'm going to share with you um, the moment Floyd was born, the look on my face. I thought I was smiling so big, I thought I was like, ah, newborn joy, but I was just like, Holy F-bomb, that's the look on my face.